Day, and it is uh, part of the National Home Canning Project. Um, a, a group of bloggers and and people who have websites and cooks and home uh, canners across the country have gotten together and really started to realize that canning is becoming um, very popular once again. As they say, everything old is new again, and canning is no exception. For some of us, canning has never gone out of style. Um, I don't, like I said before, I don't ever remember my mom canning, but I remember both of my grandmothers canning, and um, it was always something that I was interested in. I was fortunate enough to learn how to can my first thing, which was bread and butter pickles, when I was in my early 20s, and um, there was no stopping me from there. But since today is National Can It Forward Day, it's August 13th, 2011, um, I and a few other YouTubers, um, I'm still working, Horticulture and Homes, and I believe Cat's Cradle. We're all in a joint effort to have like this round robin canning party on YouTube. So this is one of my contributions. Th throughout the day, I will be uploading um, at least two more videos. But with this is something I talked to you about several weeks ago where I wanted to start a series on canning from the very basics all the way to the more difficult things. So this was an excellent opportunity for me to do that. And what I have gathered here for you today is an example of equipment. We're going to talk about equipment and a little bit about safety and where you can get started because I don't want you to be intimidated. I want you to try and can something because it's so satisfying when you have a garden or don't have a garden you get a great deal on something for you to go um, and be able to preserve that for future use so i'm going to rick pull out and show you the display that i've set up for you in my kitchen today and i don't want this to intimidate you because this certainly is not something you have to have every single piece of equipment but you know if he just pans across here i have everything on you know here these are all of the things that i have canned that are water bath canned. This is my water bath canner. And a water bath canner is nothing more than a large pot. This is a 21 quart pot. It has a canning basket. If you don't have the basket, you can make your own base in the bottom using the, rim, the rings from the canning jars. You just tie them together or lay them in the bottom. You just wanna make sure that your, your jars do not touch the bottom of that pot while they are processing. And my canner came with a basket, so that's not really a problem. And sometimes you have to buy them separately, but I've never had to do that. This is my pressure canner. Again, if you've never done canning, you probably don't want to start with pressure canning. You want to start with something more simple, and the water bath canner is the way to go. This is an, Everything here is an investment. Canning is an investment. The jars are an investment. The equipment, the pots, pressure canner, water bath canner, everything is an investment. But when you're talking about cooking for your family, what's the problem? I'm showing them all the different scary warning labels oh. on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is nothing to fool around with if you don't have the experience using it. You saw my video on canning chicken. I had this in my attic for two years before I even got it down because I was afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it anymore. When you can create this, this is chicken, chicken breast chunks. I can open this up, I can make a gravy, and I can have chicken and gravy over mashed potatoes in about 15 minutes. Here's Rick's spaghetti sauce that we can. Oh, my kids can crack this open, boil up some pasta, and have lunch in 15 minutes. Or we can have it for dinner. Here's some pork shoulder that's cubed up. I've taken it off the bone and pressure can that. You take that out. You can remove the fat that settles at the top. 
shred this up in a pot or a pan, add some barbecue sauce, and you have instant barbecue pork sandwiches. Ground beef. Hamburger helper was never so easy, and you can do it yourself. Throw this in a pan, broth and everything, add a few cups of water, add a half a pound of macaroni, a can of diced tomatoes, some cheese, whatever. You've instant homemade hamburger helper and it took no effort. You didn't have to wait to, you didn't have to remember to thaw the meat out. It's already ready already. Where have you heard that before? Here's some beef chunks. I've used these previously in my beef ragu and penne pasta and this is fabulous. Use it for barbecue beef sandwiches, use it in a quick beef soup, quick beef stew. Heck, you can do anything with this. I put it in spaghetti sauce and, and put it over some pasta and it was delicious. You can use this for a quick beef stroganoff. You just don't have to wait. To, you don't have to. There's a no-brainer. Canning meat makes life easy. And this is my bacon. And all you have to do is take that out of the jar, unroll the paper on a baking pan, put it in the oven, put it in the oven for about five minutes, get it crispy, and you're good to go. If you don't want to get it crispy, you just take it out, chop it up, put it in your beans, and put it in the crock pot, and you're awesome. Wait, Sammy you, loves canning, too. You heard bacon, didn't you? Yes, you heard bacon. Okay, I'm going to go through some of my water bath canned items. I have a lot of water bath canned items, and that is because I just started pressure canning within this year at the encouragement of my friends, Cat's Cradle, I'm still working, and, um, and Bear Prepper. I figured if those ladies could do it, so could I, and I need to get off my butt and swallow my pride and get rid of my fear, because that's the only way that you can face your fears is just to get it over with. So what do I have here? Corn relish. That was inspired by our trip to historic Williamsburg last year, and we ate at this tavern, Christiana Campbell's Tavern, where they serve a historical menu, and they served corn relish that Rick just was blown away by. So I came home the next week, and I created my own corn relish, and it is fantastic. You can use fresh corn. You can use frozen corn. I used frozen corn last year, and it came out wonderful. I eat it right out of the jar. It's amazing. He does. It's true. Here's my, there's some dill pickle spears. And here's some more dill pickle spears. And I like a lot of stuff in my dill pickles. That's why you'll see all those good spices in there. These are my cucumbers that I grew in my garden. Here's some Roma tomatoes that I got for 99 cents a pound. In, it must have been February or March. And when we heard all of the freezing that was going on in Mexico, you know, at that time, I thought, well, if I could get them for 99 cents, I'd better put some up because you just never know. You never know. So here are my peaches that I put up this summer. I bought 50 pounds of South Carolina peaches from the grocery store, and these are amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Rick, well, he won't stop talking about how good they are. Um, this, the, this is just wonderful. You can drain these or not drain them. You can eat them right out of the jar. You can put them in the fridge and have a little peach melba made out of these. You can make a peach cobbler out of these or a peach pie. And you can put them on cottage cheese. That's one of our favorite ways to eat peaches. If you like store-bought canned peaches, those are like 10 times better. You'll never eat canned peaches from the grocery store again if you do it yourself. And my bread and butter pickles that I shared with you not too long ago. The, better they, the longer they sit on the shelf, the better they get. And here's my salsa that people have been clamoring for me to show them how. But I believe that one of the ladies is going to show how to do salsa today. And after that, um, if I do salsa again this summer, I will share with you how I do mine. It's also amazing. This is strawberry pineapple jam. And I made this last summer, and it is delicious. Red raspberry jam made with organic raspberries I put up last summer. Fantastic. I'm going to run out of room. Blueberry jam from local blueberries, and I actually put this up more than two years ago. Um, the seal is still good, and it is still very tasty because we opened up a, a jar of it not too long ago and had it on my mom's cheesecake. This is what was supposed to be apricot jam, but as you can see, 
This was a fail, but not totally. This was a life lesson for me. I didn't realize you weren't supposed to peel apricots, that all the pectin causes the apricot jam to get thick and delicious. I peeled the, I peeled the apricots like you would peel peaches, and look what happened. My apricot jam did not set up. So we have delicious apricot syrup. That's blueberry. This is plum jam. I made this this year and it was absolutely delicious. I made, I shouldn't say was, it is absolutely delicious. You put this on some toast with some cream cheese and uh, you are in heaven. Apple butter. In the fall, I'm gonna make some apple butter. Um, there's a lot of people who like pear butter. This is actually a little bit of both. It's more apples but I do add about 20% pears to my apple butter because pears have a very high concentration of pectin in them and you don't have to put any pectin in this and it's delicious. Another something I want to try is cherry butter. I saw a recipe for that I'd really like to try. Here's my pickled and this is a mixture of jalapeno and banana peppers and you saw me do those as well. This is strawberry rhubarb jam I made especially for my father-in-law and this is his favorite jam so I need to get on the ball and send him a jar. Or three. Or three. This is apricot pineapple jam. Um, this one as opposed to... Where is it? This one, no, where is it? Oh here it is. This one came out too thin. This one I used a new commercial pectin I bought in bulk and I put a little too much pectin in it and it got too thick. So what I have to do with these two is I have to combine them, mix them up, put them in a pint jar in the fridge, and then we have perfect apricot jam. <laughs> you do what you have to, right? I don't see any of your blue ribbon pineapple jam. There's a reason you don't see any all. pineapple jam because we <laughs> ate it all and that's one of the videos I'll be doing. It was blue ribbon winning. This is fig jam. Um, while it's not one of our favorites, um, a co-worker of mine, her mom has a fig tree in her backyard. I now have two fig trees in my backyard. I prefer to eat the, the figs either fresh off of the tree or dehydrated um, or in recipes. The jam is delicious. Um, it would be fabulous if you put it on a crostini with some brie or some gorgonzola cheese. If you bake this into a brie and puff pastry, it would be delicious. Um, I like it because I like figs. It is definitely an acquired taste and my mother has a co-worker who uh, is an immigrant from Russia who flipped out when she found out that I made fig jam. So I shared this with her and she really enjoyed it and I really appreciate knowing that, that there's someone who really enjoyed that. Um, I don't like to waste things so I'm always trying to figure out a way to use them. I think, oh one more right? This is orange marmalade. And orange marmalade never really sets up all the way. I did not put any pectin in this, but it is still delicious. I used this, I think I did an apricot orange chicken that I used my orange marmalade and my apricot jam in. This is fabulous if you use it to, you put it over some chicken thighs and throw them in the oven. Delicious. Um, the only one in my family who really enjoys orange marmalade, like on toast, um, but I usually save this because when you can get oranges really cheap in the winter time, which didn't happen last year, this is actually from two years ago, um, then I like to make a, at least one batch of orange marmalade. The other thing that I like to say is that when you can, and you do all this work in the summer, or all year, or we're canning all year, you don't ever have to worry about not having a gift if somebody's birthday comes along or or Christmas comes along oh my goodness and here's someone I forgot to put on my list it's never is a no-brainer because canning allows you to give your bounty and what you've produced throughout the year as a gift and who doesn't love that or if you live in a snow prone area or a flood prone area you always have something to eat in That's your house absolutely right and for those of us who are preppers and we can for a reason um, that goes without saying because we're preparing, we're saving for a rainy day, let's say, or we're saving for whatever may come along. So, moving right along, the equipment that you probably definitely want, water bath canner with a rack. You're going to need um, a pot to put your rings and your lids in. You're going to put your rings and your lids. The rings you keep, the lids you throw away, you see this is a used lid. 
I will not use that to, re to can again, but you can save these and you can use them to vacuum seal the jars with and with great success. You won't have to worry about this um, losing its seal. I have hiccups now. The only thing you're going to have to repurchase are the lids. These are fairly inexpensive. I buy them a case at a time because I don't like to run out of them. And um, you just stick them under your bed somewhere and just know that you have them. So a pot to boil your lids and rings. You're going to need a stock pot to prepare whatever you're preparing. If you're cold packing or something, you probably don't need it. But if you're going to make jam or you're going to make pickles or anything else, you're going to need to pot. You're going to have a you're going to need to pot. That's funny. You're going to need to put in a pot or process some way. You're going to need a large pot. If you're going to pressure can, you're going to need a pressure canner, but you certainly don't need this pressure canner. This pressure canner is a 19 quart pressure canner, and unless you're willing to make that investment, this is a $300 piece of equipment. You don't need to go that far. You can go to Walmart and buy a seven uh, a, pot, a pressure canner that will hold seven quarts for $60 or you can go on Craigslist, or you can go on eBay, or you can maybe see if your neighbor or your grandma has one that they don't use anymore. So it doesn't have to be an investment at all, but maybe an investment of your time. Um, Rick did want me to mention, you've all seen me use my electric pressure cooker. You cannot use that for canning. It says specifically you cannot use it for canning. It's a completely different apparatus. It does not reach a high enough pressure to can meats. Other equipment that you are going to need, and I'm going to come around the front of the table here because I've kind of discombobulated my kitchen so that I can do this presentation. Okay, a timer. You absolutely have to have a timer. I have two timers. I have one that stays at my stove and one that stays on the desk because my children and my husband like to abscond with it. So, a, a jar lifter. The reason you have it, this is one of these swanky new jar lifters that actually closes when you push it. It's so spring loaded open. It is spring loaded and it's fantastic. And um, I bought myself one because, you know, I'm a gadget girl, so I'm always getting the new gadget. This is a traditional jar lifter. It makes you have to, you know, put a little more effort into it, but it still works great. And I won't ever get rid of my traditional one. A masher. If you're going to make jam, you're going to need a masher. And one thing you will notice about all of these pieces of equipment here, they are all stainless steel. They're not wooden spoons. They're not plastic spoons. They are stainless steel. Because of sanitation purposes. You're going to need a slotted spoon. You're definitely going to need at least, I have more than one of all three of these. A slotted spoon. A solid spoon for stirring and removing foam. A ladle for ladling into your jars. This is called a spider. This came with a wok that I got, but I use it all the time. If I, when I process my peaches, I use this to scoop my peaches out of the hot water. When I process my tomatoes, I do the same. This, this is one of those things from infomercial, but I have to tell you, this used to be called a blanching basket and they're almost impossible to find well now you know there's some swanky uh, as seen on TV product now and I can't remember what the thing is called but this is a fabulous little basket you can turn it in and it'll sit sit just like that you can use it as a strainer you can use it for a blancher you can use it to put in hot oil and fry french fries or whatever but it folds up and I just hang it up on on my kitchen sink there with my measuring cups and stuff and it stays out of the way. With the pressure canner, the one thing you're definitely going to want to make sure when you buy one that has a rack. This rack goes on the bottom. Mine has two levels so it has two racks. Because I saw it, I was thinking of it, I needed to mention it. Back to the equipment. These are niceties and I would call them necessities but if you don't have them you could you could get by without them. This is a lid lifter. When you've got your lids in the hot water, this has a magnet on the end. This is very helpful. This, I don't use this a whole lot, but this is a measuring guide. When something says that you want to leave an inch of head space, this has little marks on it. You probably can't see them, but you know, this is one inch. You would, 
you would put the edge there and that would be one inch of headspace and you know three quarters of an inch and a half an inch and a quarter inch of headspace but the best way to know headspace is to know your jar this is approximately one inch of headspace okay and this is approximately a half inch of headspace a quarter inch of headspace pardon me this is a half inch mm -hmm. and then this is a quarter inch so if you know that and can remember that you can eyeball it but if you're worried a little more or is angle. always better it's okay you can use this you use it thusly you would you know you would put it inside and you would know that you know that's an inch an inch quarter inch see right there and it, it pretty much lines up with the ring um, on the thread of the uh, the jar lid so you're also going to need some jars. I have an assortment of jars out here. You can talk about the other end. Oh yeah, the other end. Hey, thanks honey. <laughs> this is very important. When you can something, you want to make sure all the air bubbles are out of the jar. Otherwise, you run the risk of contamination. And when you're going to all this work, you don't want your jars to be compromised. Because that means they're going to sit on the shelf, the bacteria is going to grow in there, and eventually it's going to grow botulism and your jar lid is going to pop and make a mess in your pantry or wherever it is you, you, you keep those things and you're going to have to throw it away. And you know, if I know most people, they're not going to bother to dump the jar out. They're going to throw the whole thing in the garbage. Okay, so this is very important. When you put something in this jar, you're going to want to go around the edge just like this. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. And go around the edge like this. And you're just going to press things and make sure all those little air bubbles come up out of the jar. You don't have to have one of these. You can use a plastic knife. You can use a rubber spatula. But do not, under any circumstances, use a metal table knife or steak knife or any kind of me metal implement. Because you run the risk of cracking or scratching the inside of your jars, which under pressure or under the, during the canning process, they could crack, make a giant mess. And like I said, we're canning to save money, we're canning for a rainy day, and that defeats the entire purpose of that. So, excuse me one moment. And I know this is a little long, but the one thing I just want to show you, here's an assortment of jars from half gallon all the way down to half pint. Jars are an investment. You're going to spend money on your jars. You're going to want to take care of them. You're going to want to wash them and put them away gently. And you're going to want to use them gently. They're not... And they're so useful, so many other things. I use jars for everything. Rick can pan over here on my can rotator. I've got an assortment of dried and dehydrated things. My beans, my wheat, you know, popcorn, oats, sugar, cocoa, brown sugar. There's rice, macaroni. I just reach for these and then I replenish them when they become three quarters you know, empty, and and they're at hand. There's an assortment of beautiful things. So, the canning jar is, is you know, the original Tupperware, in my opinion. The last thing I want to talk about is, if you're new to canning, if you've never canned, if you have a desire to can or learn to can, the best thing I can tell you is do your research. A little reading can go a long way. You know that old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Same thing here. You do a little bit of reading, give yourself a little bit of knowledge, educate yourself on the things that you want to learn, and you can go anywhere. Okay, you can can. You can can. These are some of the books that I have in my library. This book here that Rick was just showing you, The Complete Book of Home Preserving, is an excellent go-to. These things, again, an investment. I love books. I'm a book junkie. Don't don't take me to the bookstore cuz I'll uh, spend all your money. I you know, I have found both of these I found at Lowe's at different different times. This one is really this cookbook is amazing. There's some stuff in here I would never ever imagine um, canning, but it's very interesting to see it. There's a lot of good information in here, a lot of interesting recipes that I never would have considered that now I'm looking and thinking, "Wow, these really are good, old-fashioned, solid things, and if the Amish are doing it this way, then I have to know that it's good. So, um, this, I bought this one at my mom-and-pop market where we buy our milk, so you can find them anywhere. But 
down here at this end, I just want to show you when you go to the store. If you go to Walmart and you say, I'm going to can, so you need some jars. Okay. <laughs> you need some jars and you're going to get some pectin, which I didn't put out here, but um, this Ball Blue book is the very first canning book you should ever buy. It's about seven or eight dollars and it is worth every penny. If you have questions, it will answer them. It has everything in here you need to know learning about canning. This has everything you need to know from temperature guide, all the information about bacteria, how it grows, the classifications of foods, what's high acid, what's low acid, how to adjust for the altitude, what the, what the water bath canner is, what the pressure canner is, all of the information that, all to the questions that you have is going to be answered in this book. And all of the equipment that you're going to need. Kind of an overview. See, here is how the threads work. The bottom of the neck is one inch. This middle, this middle ridge is half an inch. The top ridge is a quarter inch. If you know that, you'll always know what level your the contents of your jar is. Talks about removing the air bubbles, cleaning the rims. And we've gone over that in other videos, and we will continue to go over that in, in future videos. And this has fabulous recipes for everything from pickles, canning tomatoes, seafood, everything that you could want to, you can, is in here. If you want to can more different things, that Home Preserving Complete book is the way to go. But here's some other things that I found interesting. This is a Better Homes and Gardens book that came out this year, and uh, I found that at Lowe's. And it's got some really good video, uh, video. It's got some really good recipes and information in it. And this one I just picked up today and have not looked at, but I love Mother Earth News, and I have gotten a lot of uh, canning recipes from their other publications in the past. And if I had a larder like that, I would be so happy. But um, there's some good information in all of these. This is just their um, gardening and canning guide. They usually put one out once a year. So, I think that covers a good portion of basics. I think that a good overview of the equipment that I use, the equipment that you're gonna need, and don't be intimidated. That's the one thing I have to stress. Don't be afraid. It's really easy. If all you have is a big stock pot, make a rack and can some jam. Get a good start. Make six, can six jars of jam and you won't want to stop ever again. You can make apple butter in your crock pot. And like I said, this fall I'm going to show you how to make apple butter. Um, and today, later today, I'm going to show you how to make cranberry sauce because I'll tell you the story when I do the video. And I'm going to show you how to make pineapple jam, even though one of the very first things I ever did on YouTube was upload my pineapple jam recipe. The video is so bad because the camera was horrible that I want to do it from start to finish and really show you how to do it the right way. So. I hope this helps and I hope it encourages you to get, you know, get your juices flowing and get canning because once you start, the possibilities are endless. So I hope you try this and I hope you love it. And until next time, happy canning.